happy Tuesday, everybody. Um, looks like I am attempting once again to go live and creative bag making. Hopefully this is working right. Cause once again, I can't see myself. There I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna turn my volume down because I don't wanna see myself, nor do I want to hear myself. Uh, today I'm gonna show you guys how I do the Sunshine Wristlet by Bagstock. It's a great, 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 great pattern. Um, and I think the best part of it all is it's a freebie um, on Bagstock's uh, site over at Craftsy. I'm currently trying to get the lamp out of the way. It's really hard to do this. I don't know if any of you have ever done this before, but this just takes some serious skill. Um, Lauren over at So Whatever, she's brilliant at it. She's got this down. Uh, hmm, looks like you guys are gonna see part of me today. <laughs> so exciting. Not sure if, how I feel about that. So, anywho, all right, this is what we're gonna make. It's free, go grab it, and I will show you guys how I do it. Um, I do it a little different because I sell a lot of these, and um, some of the stuff that I do is a little bit different because I don't do the uh, wristlet strap the same size. I don't, I don't put it in the exact same place, and you don't have to uh, when you're making a bag. This is um, the beauty of bag making is make it what it needs to be for you. So uh, inside the pattern, she has a um, Nimrata has a, I believe she has a slip pocket in here. Um, I don't put a slip pocket in. I. It's kind of small. I, I think it's more work for me, and I just think that my clients prefer just having a zipper pocket. So it doesn't, for me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, that's completely up to you. Uh, I am going to show you a couple of things that I have here. You can grab on my Craftsy page that I use when I'm making this. Um, hi, Sandy. Hey, Kathy. Uh, you can grab these over on my Craftsy page over at Amy Lynn Designs. I have um, these fun little zipper templates that I made. That you just print them out on your cardstock and then you can repeatedly use them and when you're done you can check them. If you hit it with your uh, ruler, your straight edge, if you hit it with your rotary cutter, it's really not a big deal. You can it doesn't hurt your rotary cutter, which is what I like the most, because when we lose a blade, we feel that pain because they're not cheap. Blades aren't cheap. So I have them in, I don't know if I have this one on there yet. I know I have the six, seven, and eight. This is the five inch that I created for another bag I make for a number five zipper. The rest of these are kind of designed for a number three zipper. You can get away with a five, but, um, you just have to know that you're gonna have to make sure that you fold it out exact so that it fits correctly. So you can see, it, it isn't, it's tight, I guess, I don't know, it's up to you. Um, I was using these for the number five zipper and it was fine. And then one night I was just messing around and decided to make it a little bit bigger and it allowed more of the zipper to show so you can see the difference. So up to you again totally up to you. In this um, sunshine, I make the pocket uh, six inches and I center it. So what I want to do is get that pocket made first because I like to, I, I like to be able to hum through it and I, I hate it when I get the outer portion done and then I still have a lot of work to do on the inside. So what I normally do is I get my lining made and I also get my wrist strap made or if I'm not doing a wrist strap, if I'm doing a full body um, crossbody bag, I get the strap made because when I finish the bag, I want to hook that stupid strap up and call it a day. So, we are going to make the pocket first. And to do that, I cut my zipper. My pocket, let me back that train up. My pocket is made, I buy fat quarters when they're dirt cheap over at Joanne Fabrics. And I buy neutral ones. And then I take them and cut them. I have a fun little, um, way that I cut them all up to get the most out of them based on a six inch, a seven inch, and an eight inch size pocket. Because I need two things from that. I need the pocket itself, and then I need 
one of these strips because this little strip let's see which let's see what length this is it's feeling like it's an eight it is this strip is going to end up being the facing on the back of this so that's you need another you need one of these so you need this and a pocket and I have a way to do that out of a fat quarter hi Lori and you can use anything you want um, say your pocket is is navy and you only have white you can still use the white I'll show you how to cut it so that you don't have to worry about it showing it's pretty easy uh, another thing I like to do is um, starch it I starch the heck out of my fat quarters that way they're nice and crisp and I don't feel the need for interfacing on the back of my pockets. So I'm going to grab one here and I'm going to use my basting spray. I'm going to shoot some spray on the back of my template and I do it in my garbage can over here, not by my machine. And the reason I do it in my garbage can is so that I don't get my floor all sticky. But you know, stuff happens. So. Stuff gets sticky. I can't help it. I just can't help it. It's just what happens down here in, in this uh, sewing cave of mine. So I'm going to grab one that I have here, and I'm just going to put it on the back. Um, and when you put it on, what you want to remember is, because this is going to get sewn onto your lining, which this is my lining piece. I found the center. Just fold it. There's my center. Uh, if you want, you can throw a little um, pin in. There we go. Remember that um, you want it to be wrong right sides together so that the wrong side of this little template piece has to go onto the back. So I am going to attach that to this. I told you guys I like, I like spray. I love that stuff. All right, so now it's on the back of here, and I'm going to give another quick shot to this now with the spray. And the spray I like is the um, Dritz Basting Spray. You have to make sure you spray it upside down. The reason you have to spray it upside down is that the little knob at the top will get clogged, and you don't want that because that's just a nightmare. All right, now, um, I have, I made a cheat sheet for myself on the fabric, the strap for the fabric, how big that has to be. The cork for the strap for the fabric because you have two options to make this purse, this little wristlet. This is a strap that goes right here and then you put your hand through it. So you can either sell it with a wristlet strap, without the strap, um, with the strap and no wristlet strap, or how I do it on my storefront, I do both. This one, because of what I did for this bag, and you'll see it in a second, I won't be making this strap here today. It just doesn't work out. So what I have is I made a cheat sheet for myself that tells me how big to make my strap, um, how big to make the cork, how far up from the bottom I'm gonna place it, and then um, the zipper, the template, and, and how far down I want my template to be. And when I say how far down, I'm not basing it on this, I'm basing it on this. So I have, um, I put it, three quarters of an inch down. I'm grabbing my big ruler, so hold on just a second. I like to use OmniGrid rulers. I can see through them and they're the right size to mess with. Do I use spray starch? I do. Uh, hi, Ruby. Um, Sandy, I do. I use just whatever I can get. it. If you can get it at Joanne, great. Use a coupon because it's not crazy cheap. If you can get it at the dollar store, great. But try it on the wrong side of the fabric before you use it because you don't want to, you want to make sure that it's not going to leave anything on the right side. And then always, before you get going every day, clean your iron off because mine gets caked on and becomes brown from the starch. So it's just one of those things that I know I have to do. So to get this lined up right, I just throw my ruler down and use any whole number to find the center. Um, and I was doing it at three quarters of an inch down. So you can take and mark this if you want. I'm gonna use my purple pen, my purple pen. So there's the center. So that way I can make my ruler flat. 
and here's that. There's three quarters of an inch. The six is marking the center. Now I told you guys this stuff dissipates really quick, which is why I like it, and it already dissipated, so I had to spray it again. So on my templates, they all have a, a, a blue center mark here and a blue center mark here, and that's to help you line it up. So that's and it's free over on my Craftsy store. Um, I will be releasing a couple of patterns soon. It's just become difficult with trying to manage a household, a husband, three kids. They're not kids, they're adults, but they still require food, damn it. And then, um, you know, trying to do my storefront and sell product, it's just a lot. But um, I'll be having videos and stuff that's all free because that's just how I roll, so. All right. So now I'm ready to sew this. I'm not gonna remove this. I'm gonna sew it. So here we go. I find the corner. And yes, I sew on a Juki DDL 8700. It's an industrial machine. Um, I changed my stitch to three. And now I'm just gonna go straight down, but I am gonna back stitch a little bit. Oh, and my bobbin. Did you hear that click? That was my bobbin. She just said, I'm all done. You can use me now. I was having issues with my bobbin yesterday, and I think it was because I had a dull needle. It just wasn't picking up the bobbin thread. God, it was irritating. It was driving me absolutely bonkers. I had it happen the other night, and so I literally just had to quit and call it a day and go to bed because it was making me angry. All right, same thing down this side. And again, if you sew the cardboard, so what? It's cardboard. It's the beauty of it. You can sew it and then you can toss it and make it another one. And if you don't have cardstock, then just do it on regular um, paper, and then you can pick up poster board, or if you do a lot of Amazon shopping, save one of the boxes, and then uh, glue the piece of paper right onto your Amazon box, and then cut it out from there, and then it's even thicker. All right, so this one's done. I'm gonna pull it away. Close trim, close trim. And now I'm gonna peel this off. And here you can hear I caught it again, so what? Now, this is a little bit loose, so I'm just gonna stitch that really quick. And it's just because I caught that um, cardboard. Fine, done. Trim, 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 trim. Lots of trimming. All right, so this is finished now. And now what I'm gonna do is cut this open. So I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and cut it right down the center. Now I'm not gonna to go to the end. I'm gonna stop before I get to the end on both ends. And you can either use this fun do hickey or you can use a, um, uh, where are they? This one's, ah, these are pretty sharp, really sharp. These are Fiskars, my children and my husband got them for me for Christmas. Or you can use, um, oh, these are really sharp too. I think these are sharper. Yeah, they're a little pointier, little nubs. Or you can use a box cutter. And I have a Scotch box cutter that I got uh, over at Target. So now what you want to do is take this point of anything, whether it be the box cutter or the scissors, and you want to get right into that corner that you just stitched, but do not catch the thread. And if you do, don't dismay. That's, you know how to sew, right? I mean, that's what we're doing. Just throw it back on, go back around, no big deal. There's nobody here judging you but you, so stop judging yourself, because nobody, it's, it's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. This is all easy. We're supposed to enjoy ourselves, so let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna tuck all that over there, my little basket of nonsenses. Now what I'm gonna do is take my, um, there was a huge discussion about this this week because uh, I failed to say where I got it from. Where is she? Most things in my sewing room are she's. I don't know why it's like that, but it is. All right, this is by Clover. You can get it on Amazon. Apparently they're clearancing it out over at Joanne Fabric, so with the coupon it's like five bucks. I got mine from Bloomery Fabrics. I get a lot from Bloomery. I like them a lot. They're very nice people. Um, they ran out of a fabric and she messaged me and said, Amy, we, we ran out of something. Um, after you had placed the order, it was like my order went through and someone else's. And so she said, you can either have, you can let us know what you want of a half yard 
or you know what or we can refund it and I said no no um, surprise me uh, so they sent me this fantastic fabric with strawberries on it I order from them a lot so they kind of have a an idea of what I like and they're just the sweetest they really are I can't say enough good things about them I like them a lot and they always have a remnant sale who doesn't love a remnant sale and they have scrap bags. Ooh, and right now they're having a, um, you should sign up over at Bloomery because they have, and no, I get nothing from them for saying all of this. I just like them. They have a subscription box for the summer and there's just some fun stuff in it. I'm waiting. I can't wait to get the notification that that's ready to ship because I'm buying it. Because I love, I love subscription boxes. I love them. I just got mine from Fat Quarter uh, Shop. And I don't quilt. I don't like to quilt. I'm not good at it. The idea of a giant quilt and then it's going to take me a hundred years to make it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not patient like that. All right. So you can either take this over to your iron and do this or sit here and do this. Um, totally up to you. I don't mind rolling it. I don't mind not getting up. If I get up, Abby comes down with my dog and she's wondering what we're doing. Are we going to do something? Am I going to feed her? Because she's always looking for food. Alright, and then the reason I'm cutting those corners is I can see it's a little wrinkled and, and I'm a little uh, OCD about that. So, alright, so this one's done. See, pretty. Alright, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put tape on both sides. And I know a lot of you already know this. Do you reuse your cardboard well template? Oh, yes, yes. Um, Lori, you can get the digital file for that over on my Craftsy store. I have one. Shocking, I know. Um, and it's just under Amy Lynn Designs, and it's free. So you can download it and grab it, and then I print them. I probably, I don't know, this one is, is it too thick? I think it's one thick. Maybe it's too thick, I don't even remember. Um, I've used this so far probably 15 times in the last week to make a pocket, and I'll continue to use it until it, until it starts to get floppy. It's not floppy yet. So. Uh, yeah, so go over and grab it. No purchase necessary. And now what I'm using is my wider tape. And the reason I'm using it is because I want to hold that flap down. So if you do this as a hobby and you just like making stuff for your family and your friends, and th then you don't have to do this. Um, but m m I do this to make money. So I try to make it look as professional yet fun as I possibly can. And that requires me using tape and whatnot um, to get that look, to achieve the look I want. Now, I know we're all like, we see stuff that comes out of China and we're like, that's really kind of crappy. Well, they don't go to these lengths, you know, and but they do so on these machines. That much I do know. My husband um, was in a factory over in China and he sent me a photo and I was like, holy cow, that's my machine. He's like, yeah. I, had to send that to you. I was surprised. So, all right. So now I'm using this. This is my thinner tape. It is uh, less than a quarter of an inch thick. I believe it's the it's three sixteenths. I get it at Tandy Leather. It is permanent. And so now it's ready for me to add my pocket. So what I'm going to do is just set this over here, and now I'm going to put my zipper on. To do this, you can either one of two. Th you can do the tape, or you can just stitch it on. Totally up to you. Makes zero difference. It is a little bit bigger, so what? Um, I just cut this over on my cutting table, so this is just like a quarter of an inch larger. What you want to do is place this right side up because when someone looks inside the zipper, they wanna see the pretty fabric. So you want this to be right side up and you want the, the right side up to the wrong side of the zipper. So I'm gonna stitch it super close to the edge here I have to open it a bit and <laughs> make sure I don't pull the zipper head off um, because, yeah, I did that the other day. I know, you're shocked. And again, so what? I fixed it. It didn't take me that long because I have a little zipper jig thing that I, I got from the zipper lady. I like her. She ships quick. Um, she's got this great uh, cording. It's the, just, just thick enough for, like, the the bags that we make, but not too thick where it looks like I just made a pillow. Okay, so I'm sewing this at about an eighth of an inch. 
So now uh, I'm gonna open this, I'm gonna flip this up to the top, I'm gonna line it up again on this side, and I'm just gonna stitch it. And I flip it over because I wanna stitch from this end where I'm lining it up, because if I do it from this end, it's gonna be wonky. All right, so there we go. And now I'm gonna stitch this side. Doobie doobie. And always leave your needle down when you're lifting it to move things around. Otherwise, you're just gonna get a hot mess of stuff happening here. All right. And all of this so far can be done on a domestic. It does not. I haven't sewn anything crazy thick, and I won't. You'll see what I'm gonna, how I'm gonna do that. Um, Cause you do have to uh, do the cork. I do the cork to hold the, the D ring, and that that can be that can get kind of thick. And so to avoid that, I've just made you know a, a few compensations for it. I would say instead of folding it, you know how we fold it in and then fold it in again. I don't do that. I don't, are we still here? I hope so. <laughs> Someone tried to call me. Let's see if that, if it picks back up. <laughs> okay, it did good. It just didn't hear. Give me one second. Suzanne is watching. My dear sweet friend Suzanne, who lives very close to me. It was so nice discovering that. All right, so. I actually can't wait to show you guys what I did for the outside of this. It was a lot of fun. I'm really quite tickled with it turning out exactly like my brain thought it would. All right. So let's, I use hemostats a lot. I don't know if any of you have them, get them. I use them for so many things, it's ridiculous. I have a 10 needle in, um, embroidery machine in, in the back of my studio here and yeah, use it all the time to pull the threads through and whatnot. All right, so now I'm gonna attach this. You saw what I did. Pocket goes up. Make sure that zipper's there. It's pretty nice, right? Doesn't look bad. Looks like we're ready and good to go. Um, oh, Lori, you are a sweetie. She went and got the link. Okay. Hi, Melinda. Um, thank you, Lori. That was, that was, oh, Savannah did too. Uh, well, I have a link. Will you have that link for us after you're done? I missed it where it is. Oh, okay. Um, Marsha, Savannah grabbed it, so that's awesome. Thank you, you guys are awesome. Okay, so here's the ticket and the trick here. I'm gonna extend my stitch to 3.5. You are gonna start on this side. This has to be up. It can't be down, because if it's down and you stitch across the bottom, you've just closed your pocket. So that's the trick. And you don't even have to sew the hole like I, I did. You can draw the box and then cut down the center and just fold it. it. It's totally up to you. This is just the method I've decided I like. Now, I'm gonna make sure that my needle is on the way back up because if it's completely in the down position, it has not grabbed that bobbin thread. And when I pivot and turn, you're gonna get that angled um, thread because it never grabbed the bobbin. So, so I always make sure that my, my, um, it's on the way up. All right, so now I'm gonna stitch it this way. And I stitch it really close to the bottom edge here. And one more over. And again, needle's on its way up. And I'm gonna pivot and go up. And I am gonna stop when I get right to this top edge. I'm not gonna turn the corner. And that's it. I'm gonna pull it out and you trim it close. Don't backstitch. You'll regret it. It'll get hung up. Okay, so I did not backstitch. So now I'm gonna pull it down and you can see it popping. It go pop, 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 pop. All right, and now it's down and now I can flip it down. Now everything's even and smooth and I've everything's been caught. So now 
I go back to the side I just finished on and go back to that first corner and I do my best to line it up into that corner. It might not be exact. Again, our clients do not shove their heads in our bags to see if we did that. Now I take two stitches forward and two back and there we go. I wanted to make sure that I caught that corner. So that's why I do that. And now I am going to pivot and stitch across the top, close to this edge. Now this is um, a number three zipper and the number three zipper head is small. So if you're thinking that you're gonna, you, you know, you know it's difficult to get your hand into a bag to grab the head of that zipper. So what I suggest doing is uh, Amazon has these fun little, um, I'm gonna stop for just a second. All right, Amazon has these. I like them. Uh, they make a job go pretty quick. I'm using gold on all my stuff, so I would pull a gold one so I can do that one. You can use brass if you don't have gold. They're not very expensive. I can find a link for everybody. And so many, this is probably the one I'll end up using. You want to attach it here, and you can just get a split ring from Joanne Fabrics. There's a package of them. I think they're like two dollars, and a pair of pliers to open them up. Not hard. And you just attach it to this before we make the bag. I won't have time to do that because I don't want you guys to watch me fuss and fight. Um, but that's what you would normally do. You would attach this before you finish making the bag, before you put the lining in. So now I'm going to finish stitching this. And that way, when someone, I know it seems like a little thing, but trust me, I backstitched again. I just want to make sure I catch that. I'm not all about doing um, different colored threads either. Like, like you know, some people are like, I want to do pink or coral or navy. Yeah, I don't have time for that. I stick with white or cream or beige, and that's it. I really don't go off the beaten path. Um, and I just don't like to. So here's the, the trick. So you, you're going to add this and when your client goes to open this zipper, think about how much easier it is for them to go in and out of this pocket now. They'll be like, wow, she knows what she's doing. It's those little things that can get you, you know, over 50 bucks for one of these sunshine wristlets. And yes, you can easily. And there's either in, you can either do it in cork, you can do it in vinyl, you can do it in fabric, and you can sell these for 50 bucks. All right, so now I'm gonna stitch the back of this. You flip this over so you're not catching it. I go back to three. Done. So the one side is done. So now I'm gonna go to this side. Flip it up, I'm gonna start at the bottom. And you can trim this or leave it completely up to you. I am going to take my small rotary cutter with, which came with this mat. I'm gonna trim it up just a little bit. I'm gonna trim up this side. Y'all can see what I'm doing, hopefully. Done. And it's in my little, this is my little garbage can basket. This little pop-up basket. That quarter, it hangs right on my um, drawer on my sewing machine. I love it. See, Ruby has a full set from Amazon. There we go. Um, way to go, Ruby. Way to go. All right, so now things are out of my way. This is done. I'm done with my lining. I don't have to do anything else. Here's the other side. I like this. I just think it's super pretty. Uh, and we're just going to set it off to the side. Now, if you want to go and iron it, go ahead. And I don't suggest it. When we iron stuff, it shrinks it up. So, yeah, don't do that. Uh, but this is where you would put your name tag if you wanted to Now is when you would do it. You could either if you wanted to put it down here do that Flip the pocket up and attach it. You can glue it. You can stitch it You can do it up here right there because you're only going to take about a quarter of an inch when you attach this I usually put mine on the outside. I don't know what I'm gonna do today. I haven't decided yet I'll cross that bitch when we come to it because I just haven't committed uh, all right, so 
Right now you can do one of two things. You can either toss it to the side or you can add your double-sided tape to the top edge because we are going to put a zipper on this. And my zippers look pretty nice because I use double-sided tape to keep them from shifting and spinning and moving and stretching. I swear by this stuff. You can get some other stuff that's not from Tandy. It's a little bit cheaper. It's on Amazon. It's by 3M. It's really narrow. I have some other stuff that I've used. Uh, it's by 3M, but it's for glass. I don't know where it's at. Um, but it, this stuff tears, whereas that stuff doesn't. So that's why I stick with this. It's just part of the deal. It's just how it works. I just know that that's part of my cost when sewing. All right. So... What we're going to do now, I'm going to prep these zippers, and I've got my two little pieces of cork, because this is how I do my zippers, and I did not put stuff in the back of them. So, my zipper is cut, and this is the reasoning. The width of this bag is uh, 11 inches, I believe. Because it's a freebie, I don't, I don't, I know Nimrod I won't mind me saying this out loud. Yes. So it's 11 inches. My rule of thumb, because I sew at a quarter of an inch, and I realize that when we put all this bag together, her directions have you at 3 8 I sew at a quarter. What I sew at 3 8 is the wings onto the front. It doesn't change anything as long as I'm consistent with everything else. So that being said, when I go to assemble the bag, I assemble it at, at a quarter of an inch. Um, it's just I, just a habit. So, nonetheless, what I do is I cut, as a rule of thumb, I cut my zippers one and a half inches shorter than the width of my bag, any bag, whether it be a pouch, um, whether it be a purse, a wristlet. If I'm going to have the tabs on the end, then that's what I do. Even if I have a tab, say I'm just doing it and I have a tab on one end, like, uh, hold on, I'll show you guys. I made, I made a, let me grab it, where is it? You guys like how I'm asking you? Where's my stuff? I don't know what I do. No, I do. All right, here it is. So, I just made these. They're five, uh, five by seven. I will cut the zipper if I were to be using, there's a green one around here. If I were to be using this zipper, which I can, it's not a big deal. I always clean up the ends. I find that it's easier to line up an end if the lot, if the end is clean and not um, sir, or cut like that, which I, I know what it is, but it's escaping me. So when you're cutting a zipper, and I say that it has to be an inch and a half less, you're you're measuring it the actual zip part, not the tape part. So I scoot that to the end here. I'm gonna do it this way so you guys can see. I'll scoot the zipper part to the end and I need it to be six inches. The only reason this one is gonna be six inches as opposed to five and a half is because I'm gonna make this even a little bit narrower. This should have been seven and a half inches but I cut it a little short, so whatever, such is life. So. This will now be six inches long, which we're gonna back that up. So that's gonna be at 12, so I'm gonna cut it there. Hooby dooby. And then you would add a tab onto the end, like a cork tab, and you line up this end, and then you'll have your cork tab. So maybe this one, so maybe I'll cut this one. Let me back that train up. So at seven, we're gonna cut this one at five and a half. Let me shave off a half an inch. I don't wanna be wrong here, man. I gotta use this. All right. There we go. All right, so I just cut it off and I have the tab over here. This is the tab. It is one inch because this is one inch by three, uh, three quarters of an inch. So you do it here and then you wrap it onto the back I just want you to see this. So you can do it with any type of bag you're making. These five by seven pouches are spectacular. They're easy to make. They suck people in. I, I love them. 
If you embroider them, you can sell them for 22. If you don't embroider them, you can sell them from anywhere between 12 and 18. So now I would peel off my tape like so. My little, little basket's backwards, I gotta fix it. There we go. So now I'm gonna line this edge up right here. It, there's no tape at that end and there's a reason. And this is all like this. And there we go. So I've, I've got, there will be a little gap between this and this. I will top stitch this because I'm not going to go stitch this, but I would top stitch this. And then this goes on here. And then when I, as I'm stitching and sandwiching these, when I get to right here, I grab my hemostats, pull this down, and then I'll have that little gap on this side too. So that's what I mean when I say cut it an inch and a half shorter than the actual width of the of the pouch or the bag or the wristlet. So I cut these at one and a half this way, one and a half, because this tape is one and a half, and then I cut it at seven eighths. Yes, I said seven eighths, because that eighth of an inch actually makes a difference. Now I'm gonna wrap it around from the back, from the front to the back, and I want it to be a little further this way than the front. So when I stitch the top on the front, I know I'm catching the back side. So I'm gonna do this one too. I could have had this all prepped, but I wanted you guys to see all of this. Let's see. I do line my five by seven pouches. What I do for most stuff in the back, um, this is the finished portion of my basement, and then there's a back section that's not finished. The builders had to finish this portion because it's just how the house is laid out. But you could see all of it. Um, so the back portion, I have a big cutting table back there and I store the supplies I may or may not need. And what I have prepped in the back, I have a box filled with these five by seven little um, squares. It's interfaced on one side with woven fuse. You can get that at Barb's or SF101. You can get that at Joanne Fabrics. And then it's ready for me to embroider. So I can just hoop my five by seven hoop. I spray adhesive um, stabilizer, and then I spray adhesive this. I line it up, center it, and go to town. And I get that. So this was perfect, the size, it was centered, and, and I did a giveaway on my own page this week. Some of you saw that, I know. I have to go say who won. All right. So, and the winners, I don't pick them. I have a friend pick them because I'm biased. Um, now I'm gonna top stitch this. I'm gonna make it at uh, uh, three and a half, that's fine. Now, for most things when you're stitching cork, you do have to switch over to a Teflon foot, but this is very short, so you're fine. And now I'm just gonna curl this one in. And if I screwed up, well guess what? I'm just gonna redo it. But I didn't. You can see the back. I caught the back. I caught the front. And you don't have to do anything to these edges because cork doesn't fray. All right, so I'm gonna toss that to the side. And now I'm gonna bring in what I made. So here are my wings. I call these wings. Uh, my wings were already prepped. I may have to dip, go in the back because I think I left my, my back piece back there. Here's what I did. I took some fabric and I embroidered from Embroidery Library. They had this beautiful design of these flowers and I had to do them. I just had to. I'm gonna let you like awe, ooh, nah on that one while I go grab the back side of this. Ooh, ah, so pretty. Okay, I'm back, and I have my my backside. I did not embroider the backside because, well, I just wanted the showcase to be the front. So, this is the front. Now I know that a lot of people, when they've sewn this, they they go wait, wait. My wings are are bigger. They're bigger. I don't understand. How are my wings bigger than my center? That's because at three eighths of an inch, when you put it together and you sew it, your wings aren't gonna be bigger. Uh, Namrata is brilliant. So she knew that when she made this, that 
you have to compensate for that. So um, here again, I have my double-sided tape. If, if we were adding, say this was the handle strap that, that was gonna go on this bag. This is where I would pull up my little cheat sheet. Hoobie doobie. It says right here, up from the bottom two and a quarter inches. So I would lay this down and I would measure two and a quarter inches from the bottom. I would put this on like so. I would put a piece of tape over here and a piece of tape over here that would hold it down. Then I could remove this and then I could put my wing on and stitch it. And that's where my handle would be. That's how easy that is. Don't, don't, don't go marking with chalk and stuff. Just use your ruler. It's just easier. And just butt it up against it. So what I'm going to do now, I need to mark 3 eighths of an inch in. And I'll show you why. And you can either do it at the top or you can do it at the bottom. It makes no difference. I am going to do it at the top. And I'm going to use my pencil. Because my white pen, which should be right here, has disappeared. Oh, it's here. Oh. Here she is. Okay. So, from this edge, I am going to mark 3 eighths of an inch in. And that would be right here. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And now I'm going to take these. And when I line it up, what I want is where this is going to stitch. I can see this. I need to make sure that this is going to catch. So if I line it up like this, you can see that it's not, it's, you're not going to be, this isn't going to be even with the top. So you have to take this and move it up until the cork fabric is just covering that white line. So I'm going to do that all the while, keeping myself even on this side. Once you get going at these, it's not that difficult. I have tape on both these pieces because I didn't realize I did that. So mine's a little bit more of a struggle. That's my own fault. Okay, so there's that. So this and that are just meeting. And it's not going to get much closer than that. And I'll show you what you can do once we're done. Again, it's not everything's going to come out perfect, but you can get it pretty darn close. All right. So I'm going to grab my other piece, this one. And again, there's my little spot. I'm going to line it up. There we go. And scooch it forward just a touch. Okay, so everything is ready, and now I'm gonna sew this at 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, my industrial machine only has quarter of an inch marks, so I use my little piece of tape here to mark my 3 eighths of an inch line, which I know because I have a pink line on my machine. So, and this one's already losing its sticky. I've been using it a while. So here we go. Okay, she's on. And now I'm gonna shorten my stitch length because whenever I assemble the bag, I have a shorter stitch length than when I top stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna go down and then back stitch. Now normally I have the back ready too, but I'm trying to do one at a time. I want you guys to see this so that I, I do a bunch of these at once so I just keep sewing. And now I'm gonna do this side. I always backstitch, or I try to. I'm not gonna say always, I try to. You don't have to. Some machines actually lock it first, so, but I try, I do my best. My machine actually, when I go fast enough, it twists it and I don't have to worry about it. So now I'm gonna fold this over. You can, you can press cork, but you have to use a pressing cloth. Otherwise, it's going to get and you don't want that. And I'm currently looking for something over here that I don't know. Oi! Oi! Give me one second. Okay. 
All right, now we're back. What I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna tape this. I'm just gonna pull this back and I need to top stitch this. Now, this is where some people do it a little bit different. You can fold it back so that this goes onto the center and then you can top stitch here or you can fold it so that it goes back onto itself. So these are your two options, okay? Now, if you're doing it this way, you want to top stitch and catch it. If you're doing it this way, don't top stitch here because you're not catching anything. Top stitch here. This is up to you. I top stitch on the cork. So I'm going to lengthen my stitch again and now I'm going to change my foot. And in my handy dandy special little drawer right here that none of you can see is my foot. There is a uh, thing you can get. Um, I don't have it. It's a quick release and I don't have a link for that one. But Carissa, Carissa McNaught might. So she's the one you're going to want to hound for that. You're welcome, Carissa. All right, so it's up, I'm tightening. This is my narrow zipper foot that is Teflon. It, yes, it says zipper, big deal. Use it for everything else, it doesn't matter. All right, this is my narrow split hinged, because um, it's a hinge, see, it moves as you sew when you're going over hills and whatnot. Uh, split hinge metal foot, that is one of my favorites. Now, I've already extended my, my um, stitch length, and I'm just gonna use the edge of the foot to top stitch. Now, I always have a tendency to use the right edge. I think it's because I'm a righty, so maybe you lefties can confirm this. And now, I am just going to stitch uh, real nice, straight down, stitching. And as I stitch, I wanna make sure that I pull this um, and give myself that nice tight seam. And I'm absolutely loving these flowers on this dark fabric. <laughs> There's a secret about this fabric. And I don't, I'm going to share it because I don't see anything wrong with it. This fabric was a tablecloth at Target. I have used it on many bags. My clients literally, when they come here to my studio and pick fabric, pick that, this fabric. Um... It's just gorgeous. It's not a linen, it's more like a polyester, and it's just got texture to it, and I made myself a bit because I loved it that much. All right, so there's that, all done. So I've got my pretty top stitching, and I've got my cork, and now I've noticed when people make this bag, when they attach their zipper, it bulges right here, and that's because of how thick this is. So to avoid that, pull this back, Take your rotary cutter or your, your scissors, whatever you're comfortable with, and trim it close to your stitching, but not your stitching. It helps to ease the burden of the thickness that your zipper has to be sewn onto. And if you're using a domestic machine, this will help your domestic sew through all these layers. Just go slow. So there you go. All right, so now I'm gonna trim this up. Trim it, trim it. And now, see how much thinner that is right there? And you can see how straight the top is. The top edge is straight across because of the fact that I lined up these edges with that 3 8 mark that I made. That, my friends, is the ticket. Now what you can do right now before you move on to the next piece, you can add your tape or wait. I suggest waiting because uh, as you noticed, I'm sure, there's very little interfacing on this bag. And we know this bag has a little bit of body to it. So what I do is two things. I use the Thermalam and I cut it smaller. Wrong side. Now the reason I use Thermalam is because it is, it, it's, when you iron it, it becomes more dense, and there's a description to this that off the top of my head I'm not, I don't have. It is, it's like felted. It's just like felted. 
And so it's completely different than the batting that they sell. Like I think that's 950 or something. I don't quite remember. But it's not the same. And I prefer Thermalam um, after all the years of sewing and all the bags I've made. You just have to try stuff. That's how this works. So when I get both these pieces together, I'm going to go iron this. And I also have a piece of 809. And I will iron this on top of that. The reason I keep this Thermalam out of this edge is because I don't want it in the seam because of how thick it is. This, however, is paper thin and it can be in the seam. So this and this will be sandwiched like that. And now we're gonna put these two together. So, grab my white and I'm going to mark this 3 eighths of an inch in and 3 eighths on this side. This fun little pen I picked up on Amazon. I am in Chicago. Amazon is in uh, Kenosha, so I can get stuff the same day, which is awesome. This is Roxanne's Quilter's Choice. I really like these pens. They work great, and they don't break, so that's kind of awesome. Now this is the back, and maybe you want to put your tag on the back. You could do that. If you want to put it on the front, you can do that. There's a couple of options, and I'll show you those when we get a little further. So now I'm going to line this up. Again, I line this up like this and then shimmy it up or back as needed. I just want this piece. The moment it covers that white dot, I know I'm good to go. So. feels about right. There we go. And now I'm going to do this side. Mm -hmm. All right. And this side's done. So now I'm going to stitch this. And you can leave your Teflon, Teflon foot on for this. It really doesn't make a bit of difference. I didn't back it. Oh well, fuzzy white. All right. Trim that. I'm gonna trim up these little tails. Normally, I'm not as uh, trimmy. I'm being trimmy for you guys. Um, you know what? I didn't shorten my length, so I'm gonna go over it one more time because I want to. Oh, she oh, there we go. And now I'm going to do this side again. I just don't like the, I don't like when it's assembled and I do a, a longer stitch length. I worry. Even though I'm top stitching it, I still worry. Okay. We're good here. And now, oh, I'm going to get this tail. Uh, hi, Nance. Um, I am making the Sunshine Wristlet from Bagstock. I'm going to fold this back now, and I'm going to lengthen again, and I'm going to top stitch the back now. And don't back stitch when you top stitch, you don't have to. Done. And you do have um, a little bit of a, a nub there, and that's because you can see that I lined it up, so that little bit is on the back, so you just trim it. And now I'm going to flip this this way, but stitch from this side, because I, like I told you before, I line up on the right side of the foot. Like I said, I wonder who else lines up. Do lefties line up on the left side? I don't know. Um, my cork is from, this particular cork is from So Sweetness, uh, Sarah Lawson, she's out of Chicago, 
I like ordering from her too because I get my stuff in like a day. It's super fast. She ships quick and I get it quick and she's just a really nice person. She hosted a um, sewing convention a couple years ago and it was spectacular. Got to meet Tula Pink. She's a doll. Sarah's great. Allison Glass was there. I missed her discussion though. So, um, And for those just joining, I am now trimming the inside edge because I don't like the excess when I go to attach my zipper. So you trim it because after you've top stitched it, there's no need for it to be there. You don't have to top stitch the center or um, trim the center if you don't want to. You can just trim both ends. It just keeps things neat. So there is this piece. And so here's the front and here's the back. And I'm going to go apply my Thermalam and my 809. So I will be right back. This is where we would play some music if I had some, but I don't. It's all turned off. All right. So you're going to want to iron your thermal lamp first. And then you put the 809 on. And it's either 809 or 808. It just depends on what you have access to. Um, it doesn't matter. And I'm waiting for my iron to heat up because she's difficult and not cooperating. There she is. When you iron thermal lamp, it gets really thin, and that's part of the reason I like it so much. And after we do this, that's when we're going to put our tape on to put our zipper on. All right. And what I also do uh, when I have downtime, I cut my inner facing and my thermal lamp. And I do use a pattern for that. I'll take the pattern and I reduce it to, I print it, I think it's 90% or 85. And that's what I used for the thermal lamp. It just keeps it just out of the seams, which is what I want. I don't want it in my seams. And unlike vinyl, if you hit a hot iron on cork, it's not going to ruin it. The darker cork doesn't like it as much, but it isn't going to ruin it. So my thermal aim is on, and it's all smushed and squishy. And now I'm going to put on my 809. And if I need to, after the 809 is done, I'll trim it on the edges. And I think I only grabbed one 809. I will grab my other 809, which I left here with you all. Hi, Jackie. I just saw your name pop up while I came and grabbed my little piece of. 809. Steam. You need steam with 809. slightly concerned as to what time it is. So I have to be somewhere at 4.15. Ooh, let's see. Um, <laughs> I'm going to trim this up because a little bit, uh, it's a little bigger. And that's just because it stretched as I steamed it. No worries. I have it set up so I have a table next to a table in an L shape so I can swivel from one to the other. So that one's ready. 
and we're going to be adding um, the tape to the top for the zipper. And I'm trimming up the bottom. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I would add my tag and I would normally do it right here. I'm not going to put a tag on this one. I'm just going to put a little tag here. I picked these up from a store on Etsy called Augie. She's from Argentina. Uh, I really liked, I didn't realize that when I bought it, but I'm just going to attach it so it'll be on the side of the bag right here. Um, I am now going to grab this tape and this is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to put it across the top. This is the stuff that is 3 sixteenths. Don't use the wider because uh, you'll see it. Now when I sew a number 5 zipper, I always sew it at 3 eighths of an inch. And I am going to switch back to my narrow zipper foot because it or my split hinge foot because it's just narrower than this one. There we go. I'll just pop her back in the drawer so I can find her. So I have a tendency to put things in places where I don't remember. All right. Now my tape is on here, so she's already marking my 3 eighths so I don't have to worry about um, adding that again. It just It's very thin so you can sew around and over it. It doesn't really get in the way. So now I've grabbed my lining pieces. Um, but before that, you know what we're going to do? Because I didn't do it. We are going to take this. I'm going to set this to the side, but we're ready to rock and roll with that. This is cut at one and a quarter of an inch, one and a quarter inch wide. Um, and it's just the, the, the width of the piece of uh, cork that I have. I am going to cut it at two inches because it is going to be for my D-ring. I believe the pattern calls for a half inch D-ring. I make mine five eighths of an inch, that, or it may even be an inch. I make mine 5 eighths so, so I can have less hardware um, than I need. I don't, I don't like having hardware that's 3 quarters, 5 eighths, 1 inch, half inch. It's just a lot of hardware. So I try to make all my wristlets and all my D-ring connections for all of my bags that are wristlets, I make it all 5 eighths. It keeps everything consistent and easier for me when it comes time for me to do the shopping and the buying and all that. So. If you're gonna sew this at the 3 eighths of an inch, I suggest cutting this at two and a half inches, but since I'm sewing it at a quarter of an inch, I'm just gonna do it at two inches. Now, I, I, I marked the center with a pencil. I drew it right down the center, and I have put double-sided tape on both sides of that line, so you can see there's a line right down the center, and I've used my narrow tape. Now, I'm gonna fold this up to meet the center, and then I'm going to top stitch this. And like I said before, because it's such a short distance, it'll be fine to do on the metal foot. If I was going longer, it would probably catch it and, and you know cause that stuttering where you wouldn't get the nice crisp length of a stitch that you need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it really close to this edge and then I'm going to sew it in again. So I've got my stitch length uh, where I want it. And I'm using the edge of the foot to stitch this. Now, if I had done all of it, you know, I would just continue and I would have switched my foot. But I'm, like I said before, I'm not going to do that. So now I'm going to move this over so I stitched it using the foot edge. And now I'm going to sew it using the quarter inch guide. Just a little shy of that because I want to catch that folded edge. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use the actual top stitch length and use that as my guide for my next length of stitching. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to stitch it with the edge of the foot. That's my first stitch. 
And the reason I leave the tail so long is because sometimes if I don't leave the take up lever in the up position, uh, the thread pulls out. And that makes for an angry Amy. All right, so now I'm gonna do this one. All right, so we're done. Now, the reason I did this like this instead of folding it four times and cutting it at two and a half is because when you fold it over, right now I've got one, two, three, four layers of thickness, along with the two layers of thickness of the cork on the bag, along with the 809, which is another two layers. So that's a lot of layers for a domestic machine to go through. This, however, um, since I've thinned it down, a domestic can do this. If you were to have made this folded so that it was like that, your domestic's going to hate you. I get my 809 over at Joann's. And then um, this is gonna be attached. Uh, I'll put it, I'll grab my D-ring and then we're gonna put it on the bag once we're ready to sew it together. Uh, my bag hardware comes from, I believe it's um, the Purse Depot. They're on Etsy, but they also have an a actual website. So that's kind of nice. So now to, uh, this is cork, it's not going to fray. Same thing goes for vinyl, it's not going to fray. So that's why you don't have to worry about it. But the other side is, you don't have to worry about it because we are going to, now I know you guys think I use tape a lot, I do. But if you've ever bought a bag at Goodwill and taken it apart, you will find that many times uh, there are O-rings that are folded on stuff like this. When you take it apart, there's tape all over the O-ring. They do the exact same thing. I was shocked. So I felt pretty good about that. So now this is never gonna open up and I don't have to worry about it. That tape is pretty sticky, especially when it's, especially when it's stuck to itself. So now this is ready, and I'm just going to put it over here in my little basket that you guys can't see. This is my little basket. It's got a bunch of nonsense in it. And I just keep it to the side for things I don't want to lose, like this too. So that's over there, because we're going to stitch that real quick. So here is the strap. Now we're going to top stitch this the exact same way. I'm going to use the edge of the foot. And I decided to make the strap fun and that it matches the lining. Try not to stretch the strap as you go because that will give your stretch or uh, your, your strap a little bit of the twist. You can also use um, the velvet foot that Carissa has done a video on. We both discussed it. It's a great little foot. It keeps things even and applies pressure on both sides so that your stitching is even. So you can do that or you can come back and stitch it using the edge of the other side of the foot and starting at the same end. Sometimes that helps, sometimes it doesn't. Now this is going to be my right side, ooh it went a little wonky there and that's my fault. So I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to catch that. This is what happens in a live video. You guys get to see when I screw up. Even if I did, I don't stop the video. I also don't rewatch my videos. So, once I make them, they go live. I publish them, that's it. I'm not a huge fan of the whole editing process and quite honestly, I'd like you guys to see the real nonsense that is me. All right, so uh, I'm gonna finish this one up and then show you how I attach it my oh I really did catch those those uh, other stitches Gosh, sometimes I want to applaud myself not gonna lie all right so now this is where you decide we're gonna toss that over there which is the prettier side do you like this side or do you like this side this is entirely up to you but whichever side you choose when you put this on put it on like that so this is my pretty side and this is gonna go in here and now I'm going to bring pretty side to pretty side. And I am going to go 
and top stitch this. This is on the edge. I'm just going to quarter of an inch it or eighth of an inch it, whatever you're feeling. I just want to catch all of those layers. Now, this was, I cut this because it's five eighths of an inch, like I discussed before. I cut this at two and a half. I only interfaced one and a quarter inches of it because if you're sewing on a domestic, again, you're not going to get through all those layers. It's just a lot of layers. It's just a lot of layers. And, and, and it'll just make you angry. And you don't want to be angry when you're sewing. You're supposed to be happy. Sewing is happy times, not angry times. All right, so now I'm gonna trim that because I don't like all those little bits and pieces and whatnot. Now, watch. Hello. There it is, that's it. So what I will do, you can either, a lot of people like to stitch back and forth and back and forth. Don't, don't do that, it's ugly, don't. There's a couple of keys to stitching, one, your top stitch should be pretty. To get a pretty top stitch, you have to have two things. A sharp needle, because if the needle's not sharp, it's not catching that bobbin thread and you'll get skip stitches and skip stitches are ugly stitches. The other thing is to lengthen your stitch. Don't leave it at two and a half, don't leave it at three, it gets bunched up and it's not pretty. Lengthen it to just before four or at four, but play around with that to find what you like. Uh, I think it's really important. So. Pretty stitches are longer stitches. Now, if you decided that you don't, don't, don't go back and forth. Like I said, it's ugly. Use a buttonhole stitch and just catch it. So the buttonhole stitch on a domestic, you just press the button and it does a buttonhole stitch. I will put money on the fact that almost everybody out there has a buttonhole stitch on their machine. And it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because it's tacking a buttonhole. So you can do that and that's pretty. Or you can do a rivet which is what I will do. I'll do a gold, gold rivet right here. Or you can stitch a little X. One, three stitches this way, three stitches this way. But don't just go back and forth because it's ugly. Okay, I've, that's my lecture for the day. Now we're moving on and we are ready, ready, ready to do our zipper. It's zipper time. See how pretty that is? All right, I'm gonna put that over there because that's sharp and I don't wanna cut myself. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I need to get this peel off, there we go. Well, I'm thinking of it, I'm gonna shorten my zipper line, or my stitch line. All right, so this, I'm gonna flip it over, make sure I'm going the right direction, which I am. And that's, I stand up when I do this so I can look straight down. All right, there we go. And I know where I need it to be. It is a quarter, it's three quarters of an inch in from this side and three quarters of an inch in from that side. And now I'm gonna peel this off. Throw that there or in the garbage or on the floor like it just fell. And line it up on that end, line it up on that end. And then I kind of pick it up and we're good to go. So now it's sandwiched. It ain't going anywhere. That's the whole ticket. And I'll double check again. Yes, my zipper will go that way. And now I'm going to stitch this at 3 eighths of an inch. Because it's a wider zipper, if you stitch it at a quarter of an inch, it's going to be a little bit wavy. That go this goes the same for um, Soda Kine. Uh, her triple zip. I do the exact same thing. I don't stitch it at a quarter of an inch. I stitch it at three eighths. It's a wider zipper. When you don't stitch it, uh, if you don't accommodate for that, your, your zip will be wavy. And that's that. So it's all stitched. Now what you want to do is fold this to this side and top stitch it. I don't fold it all down and top stitch it because I don't like the lining to be top stitched. That's just my preference. Now you can either switch this. We can wait and you can stitch it with the um, Teflon foot. So 
Maybe we will. How about we do that? We will leave it, and we will after we do it that way. I can. There won't be any stuttering on the on the um, on the cork, and this will be salvageable, and I can sell it. <laughs> That's the goal. All right. So now I'm going to peel this off, and I'm going to do this side. And I'm just standing up to look down, and I'm lining this up. Look at that. And I'm going to use the edge of this to line up with this one. Okay, that looks about right. And I'll show you how I know if I did it right. It's not real high techy. But I open it up and I can see, yeah, they're pretty close. It ain't going to get any closer than that. And I can see my edges are pretty close. So now I'm going to fold it back. And I'm going to take my other side. And I'm going to attach it. Okay. Ooh. Now if it turns out that one side is a little bit larger than the other, don't worry about that. That's what scissors are for. Mm -hmm. We will trim it. Not a big deal. So I'm going to peel this just a little bit. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to take it over and I'm going to stitch it at 3 eighths of an inch again. And making sure that everything is lined up. There we go. I'm going to leave my needle down while I open the zipper up because when you hit the zipper head, it, it will make it wave a little bit and you don't want to do that. scissors and then I can trim the back I can see all my little extra threads and I'll sit and trim everything that's preference you don't have to um, but you can see this little pocket the reason I sew it so that it's one piece is that I never have to worry about this bottom opening up or one of my customers calling and saying Amy I, I <laughs> bottom opened up. I don't know how to fix that because they don't sew. So they wouldn't literally know how to fix that. And I would be getting a bag back because I stand by everything I make. All right. So I'm going to pop that off. I'm going to grab my Teflon foot. It's actually, I don't believe it's called Teflon. It is Teflon, but Teflon is a copyrighted or trademarked word. So they call it nonstick. My set, I have a full set, it's this one and two others, and it's from Qtex Sewing. That's where I got mine from. So now I'm going to top stitch this, I'm going to lengthen my stitch again, and all of this seam has to come to where I'm top stitching. So I have to make sure, and I can feel that, that it's going that way. My lining, both my lining pieces go to the right, all this folded stuff goes to the left. I'm starting here because if that thread pulls out again you'll see an unhappy Amy and I'm just gonna feel the bottom and I'm doing my best to use the edge of my foot and, and it makes about an eighth of an inch maybe a little bit um, more than that this this Teflon foot has a is a bit wider than my split hinged because my split hinge is a is an eighth of an inch Now you could use navy fabric uh, or navy thread if you're doing navy fabric and your top stitching won't be as noticeable if you're not good at it yet. So that, I mean it takes a little bit of time to get really good at the top stitching thing but the biggest key there is to always make sure 
that you're using a lengthened stitch. That's what's going to give you the nicer top stitch. Don't, like I said before when I, when I scolded, don't leave it at, um, <laughs> don't leave it, don't leave it short. Two inches, two, or number two is just ugh, ugly. I can't stress it enough. It is the, it is the first thing people will see, and you'll look at it and go, why didn't that turn out right? And it's because you didn't lengthen your stitch. Yeah, and it, with cork, say you forgot to do it, pull it out. You can pull it out. Go put a pressing cloth on there and stitch it, and no one will see it, because those heal. Well, I'm not even joking. The holes in cork will heal. All right, and I'm just checking every little bit of stitch. I want to make sure that it's all staying where it's supposed to. And it is. Okay. So that's that. So now we have our bag. Oh, how pretty. Woo. Okay. Enough of that. I'm going to leave it open because we are going to... Hey, look at that. It pulled it off. It's a little things that I find humorous. Um... I'm going to change my foot because I am no longer going to be needing it. And I prefer this one because I'm a little, like I said, OCD. So we're going to loosen that up. And we're going to throw this one in. You know what's funny, uh, Savannah? I have done it with vinyl. Um, and if I put a pressing cloth on and I steam it, I know it's terrible, but it will melt the vinyl back. Leather is worse. Vinyl is not nearly as noticeable. Just take a small piece and fold it over and just practice with it. And you'll see that those holes... Let's it again, ladies. Uh, Alright, so now what I'm going to do... Haha! I'm going to grab this little guy right here, and I just put him on. I don't put him all the way at the top because it gets too thick, so I put him a little bit lower. I think that's about a half an inch. Look at that. It's like, it's like I know what I'm doing or something. Let me go back here, and I'll probably catch up to myself. Um, yeah, so I put it about a half an inch down, and I will stitch it. I want I don't want it moving it that's like yeah shorten your stitch a couple stitches done pull it out cut your thread and now I'm gonna stitch it all together I do my best to line up these cork pieces at the bottom but again this is handmade um, and don't think for one second that other bags are perfect because they, my friend, are not. You do the best you can and they do too. I, I'm not even kidding. I was looking at a coach bag. I literally was looking at a coach bag just for this particular purpose. I wanted to see. There was errors all over the place. So, it, And there was ladder stitches at the edges. So stop being so hard on yourself. So I lengthened, or I shortened my stitch. I lined everything up. I started at the bottom because I lined up this where the cork and the fabric met, and now I'm gonna curve it up and go this way. One of my favorite things to do when I sew is to sew a curve, and I don't know why. I just enjoy it, and I like to do it fast, but today I'm gonna do it slow. So uh, I'm gonna pin this because I really like it when my upper portions meet. You can't pin cork, uh, and it is, yes, it does make a hole, but that's not so much it. I just don't like pinning cork. Because you can pin it long ways, but then you have to worry about pulling it out. Now I'm about to hit, I'm about to hit the D ring where those pieces are sandwiched. If you don't help it over that hump, even though it's a little hump, uh, you'll get an extended stitch where it's too long and the needle didn't go down and grab that bobbin. So to avoid that, you need, and everyone should have one, if you've ever owned a domestic machine, Ooh, my two and a half inch ruler was in there. Um, the things you find in your baskets. 
It's called the Gina Majig. Uh, Bernina's is a perfect square. This is the kind that came with my with my Husqvarna. It, you don't get one with the industrial. It helps to raise the foot pedal so the back is um, parallel to the feed dogs. You want your foot parallel to the feed dogs. It they both they have to ride. If one is higher than the other, what happens is again that it's not catching that bobbin thread. So now I'm about to hit it and I'm just gonna slide this under the back. I'm sure there's a different way to use this. I'm sure there's a purpose for this who did, who, who, I don't know what, I don't, you just keep sewing. I just, if you don't have one of these, you could use this. You just put it behind there. Just don't go backwards. And I'm not gonna say ask me how I know because that one I haven't done. I do screw up a lot, but that I did not. And so, um, now that was it, I made it. And now this stitch is perfect with, with the front. It's all the same length, which was the goal. Now if you want your lining fabric to sit nicely inside of any bag you make, not just this bag, but any bag, the trick is to make it smaller. I'm sure there are some that will disagree with me, but by um, my own trial and error, it is, making the uh, lining a little bit smaller. So I, so if I'm sewing at a quarter of an inch, I will sew the lining at 3 8 and it will sit nicely. Now what I'm gonna do when I get to the bottom, all this seems to be coming together quite nicely, which, you know, leaves me look tickled a little bit. Uh, again, I can eyeball it. I have a little mark here on my machine, I can see it. And again, I told you I like to serve, so around the corners. I'm going to come around and stop. Once I exit this corner, I'm going to stop. I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to forward stitch now. And when I get to the beginning of this next uh, curve, I'm going to stop and back stitch. And a back stitch. And now I'm going to complete this, this corner. All right, there we go. So now I've made it all the way around. I'm up at the top. I've made sure that my two pieces where the cork folds together where that zipper's at. I don't want them like this um, because when I show you like this, what I mean is that's where the cork is folded. This is the zipper in between here. And I'm lining these up so the tops where those the zipper's at are even. If they're not even and they're like this, that's, that's another thing where people are like, well, you want $50 for that? How about, you know, 30 so you want 50, trust me. Now I'm hitting this where it's multiple layers. I go, I've gone from the fabric, which is just, you know, three, four pieces of fabric, because I SF'd it, and then I it's the cotton. And you're going to the cork, that's the cork, the cotton, the SF, uh, the 809. So you have to use your thing again. Use your little genoma jig. Lift the back foot here. Make sure you're not gonna hit it and continue on. Take a couple stitches, help it along, and there you go, you're done. And you've now created that even stitch again. So now I'm gonna, I'm back at a quarter of an inch, and I'm curving it this way to catch this one. Done. All right, so the next thing, the trick to having nice, corners and curves when you turn this out is pinking shears. Not a lot of us have them. Not a lot of us can afford them. These aren't very expensive. I want to say these were less than 10 bucks. I have some nicer ones. Um, Christmas, you know, my birthday. This is the kind of stuff I ask for. What do I need? Uh, trim this as close as you can. Starting above the curve, close to your stitching, but don't catch your stitching and definitely past where the cork and the um, fabric meet. You don't have to do the bottom. I'm kind of doing it, not really. I didn't fully commit there. Now I'm gonna corner up this way. And there we go. So now we've trimmed that and when you go over to the iron, it you're gonna steam these corners to turn them the right way. That's what helps to turn them as well. 
and if the cork I was using was blue, say the cork was blue and I'm using white thread, this is where I'm a little, and this is where I would have done a little bit different. I would have sewn with the white thread in the center. I would have switched over to my black or navy thread and I would have sewn up the navy cork in the black or the navy thread. The reason I do that is because no matter what I do, there's always pressure on those seams being pulled apart and you're going to see the stitches. I don't want you to see the stitches. You can either sharpie them or you can do what I do and that's where I switch my thread. It's a little bit more work, but you know what? This, this sells for $55. I'm pretty proud of that and I think that's the reason is because I take a little extra time when I do it. And if I and if it doesn't pass my quality control, it doesn't go out. It's a gift. Yeah, I'll give it as a gift. So now, back to this. Remember where I told you I backstitch? The reason I do that is because this is where I open it up. I don't pull things through the pockets because I don't like sweating. And yes, it makes me sweat. I don't want to sweat. I'm not even joking about that. I did it once. I was sweating and breathing heavy, and I thought, I am too old for this. So I actually did a little poll and asked a bunch of my customers, you know, I said, okay, so do you guys look to see where I turn the bag? They're like, what? That's all I needed. They don't. So I don't care. They don't care. I don't care. That's the one thing I've noticed. And then I actually bought my, um, uh, hus my husband, my son's fiance. I bought her a, a coach bag for, for Christmas. And when I looked at the pocket on the inside, um, I looked to see if that's where it was done and it wasn't done in there. And then I looked at the bottom of the bag. That was it, where the seam was at, where the turn seam was. And then she brought home a Marc Jacobs bag from her parents for Christmas. They, they don't live here where we're all at. And uh, again, the seam was in the bottom of the Marc Jacobs bag. So you know what? I'm not feeling so bad about any of this anymore. I was. So now I'm going to go over here and I am going to iron this and spin this uh, so you guys can see it finish. And again, my iron decided she's all done for the day because she's lazy. Alright. So I've, I'm turning the bag and the lining is all over. I'll show you guys. It's a big ball of mess. So you can see. There's the lining. Now I'm gonna go over to the iron and I'm gonna push the rest through. I'm gonna heat this up and push the rest through. Um, very little ironing on my part just because I I really did interface this well and there she is so that's it and you can see the bottoms are nice and that's because I trim them with the pinking shears I I highly suggest if you do any more sewing with curves or whatnot, get yourself some pinking shears because that right there, my friends, is the ticket. Those are what make it um, nice. Now, this is going to fold pretty nicely because there was stitches there and it wants to fold on those stitches where the holes are at because it kind of caused it to be perforated. So that's it. And now I'm going to take it over to the machine. My stitch is shortened and I'm just going to close it up. I always start a little bit past where I made the hole, and I'm gonna stitch a couple forward, a couple back, and then just close her up. Oh, I didn't put a tag on this one. See that? I was so busy. I'm okay with that though. This one actually is a gift. I think she's going to love it. I am in the, um, I am in the sunshine. We have a swap that I run with uh, Diana. Diana runs it with me. 
and we have a sunshine um, wristlet group that we do a swap in and right now our swap goes out tomorrow and yeah well I couldn't decide what I wanted to do for her and then I saw this and thought this is beautiful so that's what she's getting and I really do think she's going to love this so now I'm just fixing everything into the corners and you can see it's laying pretty flat it's nice and I'm gonna zip it shut and then I will go in the back though and um, make the wristlet strap and add the and I threw it over here somewhere it's in my pile of nonsense here it is and so I will take this in the back I'm going to put a rivet here right there and I'm gonna put a rivet right there and that's it and I will add that I will add the little tab right there and then I'm gonna get her some fun little goodies but that's it it's all finished I hope you guys enjoyed that if you have any questions Again, like I always say, um, don't hesitate to send me a message. Uh, I usually respond to everybody in less than a day. Um, or you can leave a comment here because I get notifications on that too. So uh, again, if you're interested in joining the Sunshine Bag Swap group, there is one just searched out. I can even give you guys a link if you message me. This one's going to end soon and we're doing one in August and it's going to have a little bit of a twist to it. So that'll be fun. Um, but if you can, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a great afternoon. I'm off to go shop for jewelry. Oh, it doesn't.